At this time, I'd like to dedicate this song to my mom. <laughs> See, I, I just can't forget singing this song every Sunday morning. Trying to get a busy in season, I'll get a, a bag of that. You know, I will always get that. That was something that was a luxury in those times, that person couldn't afford it, but I know I could look forward to getting a lot from her. Um, she was a hard worker because even up until now, she you'd have to curse her to not to do certain things. Alright? Even to um, go in the kitchen and wash plate. Even when the plate is clean, she's gonna go in there and wash it the same way. 
that's how she was, she, that's the type of person she was. So that's the memory I have of her and that's what I'd, I'd like to take from her. Despite everything, because everybody knows what my misery You can't take that away from her. Because something bothers her in the morning, when you come in the night, you're going to know. And she's going to still be talking about it up until that point. Alright? But, but um, I always say to her that she's a blessed person because even up to the age of 93, she didn't wear a diaper until she had to go to the hospital when she got ill. Unfortunately, she didn't make it um, past that, but she was, based on that, I can say that she's a very blessed person. She was still strong, she was still functioning, she was still reading without even using her, her, her glasses. Right? Because every time she, I go there, anything she, she catch, she would take it up and read. Even something for the kids. Alright, so I hope that she'll rest in peace and I'm um, glad for knowing her and for being a part of her life and hope to see her one day. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Richard. This one is from, uh, good day, good day everybody. Good day, this one is from uh, her daughter, Carol, in London. She said, my mother has always been a sustaining force for our family. And one of my greatest joy is seeing her integrity, her compassion, her intelligence reflected on me and my family. I miss my mother so much, nothing can replace her. She was my role model. She nurtured us with her love and care. She was a strong-willed lady. She taught me how to believe in myself, no matter what others say. My mother, my love for her is unconditional. Love you, mother, always. Rest in peace, my love. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Second Thessalonians 2 and it speaks about the coming of love. I'm going to read from the King James Version beginning at verse 1. It reads, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not shaken in your mind, or troubled, or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, concerning the day of the Christ which is at hand. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is, he as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth. 
that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he take out of this way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and will destroy the brightness of his coming. The word of the Lord. So, you know, in this COVID time, people are having all kinds of explanations and telling us all kinds of different things. And many people are troubled in their minds. Many people are distraught and they're wondering. Here are the facts. One, Jesus is coming again. COVID or no COVID, vaccine or no vaccine, Scripture is very clear that Jesus is coming again. That the world as we know it and the way things are at the present time are not how they are always going to be. That the one who came and lived among us died and rose from the grave, ascended into heaven, and is now by his Father's right hand, will one day come again. But here's the wrong. We don't know when that day is. Nobody knows. Nobody can say with certainty when that is going to be. And many people have made fools of themselves trying to predict and tell you that it's this day and that day. And when you know they have to change and revise and review and give all kinds of explanations as to what happened. That's not our view. That's not what the Bible teaches. No one knows the day nor the hour. So, the fact of his coming is certain. The time of his coming, nobody knows. What then must we do? We are called not to get flustered, not to get, you know, distracted and frustrated, but to be sober-minded and to have our minds clear about these things and to be prepared. To be prepared. To make sure that whenever he comes, we are ready. We don't know when it is going to happen. Could be as early as tomorrow. Could be 50 years from now. Could be 100 years from now. We don't know. And precisely because we don't know, we must make sure that we are ready. Today marks the third Thursday in a row that I am at the funeral. First Thursday, the first one was in South Manchester in Grove Town. Young man, 50 years old. People are there, lots of green. Those who know politics, lots of green. <laughs> right? Last week, Thursday, I was in North Manchester in Evergreen, going to a Balaclava site. Lady, so a young man, 50 years old, young a woman, 60, 60, 60 years old. And he was there, the council was there. Similarly in South Manchester, and he was there, the council was there. And to talk about her life, she, lots of orange. <laughs> I don't know if it's a political persuasion, it's not important. <laughs> Point I'm making, men are dying, women are dying, young people are dying, old people are dying. And green, orange, no matter. Death makes no distinction. Death makes no distinction. We can go at any time. Sister Enid lived to a ripe old age, 93 years old, long life. Right? But three year olds are dying. So they get 93 or 23 or 53 or 33. That is why it is vital. Ready. Whether Jesus decides to put his appearance 
uh, when I said it's very technical, we must make sure that we are It's not about much inside. That's not important. It is about knowing that whenever time Christ decides to call that word or whenever he decides to call us to our goal, we are ready. uncertain nature of death. Life is filled with all kinds of unexpected eventualities. The wise person does not wait until the rain starts to check if his roof is, is leaking. He does it before. Preparation. Preparation. So that is my word to you. I want to feel that Sister Enid as far as I knew her, was prepared. She had settled her business. She had lived her life in a way that when death came, she was okay. She was at peace. What about you? What about me? If death should come, are you ready? If Christ should put in appearance tomorrow, tonight, are you ready? We must be very sure that when our number is called and our name is issued, is uttered by the master. We are ready. And don't delay. Don't put it off and say some other time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Don't delay. Because you may not live to see 93. Make it right with God, with your family members, with your relatives, while you still can. Because once death comes, it's finished. Nothing more you can do to fix up at that time. So do it while you can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is Bishop Walker there? Bishop Walker, no? Oh. Okay. All right, family members, we know. We know how difficult this time is. The, the, you know, each person is, is unique. And they serve a unique purpose in our life. So when that person is gone, nobody else can, can fill that space. Nobody is exactly like that person. And Sister Eden was unique in her own way. And you will have memories of her. And I want to encourage you to keep those memories and allow them to inspire you. I'm going to offer a prayer at this time for the family. And I want you to believe that God's grace is sufficient. God's strength is made perfect. No. Let us pray. 
Turn on a guide. It prompts you at the scan. With thanksgiving, but also with a great burden on our heart. Lord, you have in your wisdom seen it fit to call your daughter home. We believe, O oh God, she is in a place of eternal joy and bliss. No more sickness, no more pain, no more nothing except all that is good. But for those who knew her and loved her best, this is a difficult season, for they must go on without her. We pray for them, O oh Lord, your eternal mercy and your unending grace, that, Lord God, you would lift them from despair and from the seeming disaster that this might appear to be. And that God would lift them to a place of delight in your presence. Consoled and comforted by the everlasting arms of God himself. Sustained by the support of the angels whom you will send to be with them. And strengthened by the memories they have of Sister Enid. Lord God, we pray that the memories will cause a smile to come on their faces. And as they remember her and all that they go forth without her physical presence, that her spirit will be with them. That the lessons imparted, the stories told, the messages shared, will be retained in their hearts and they will seek to emulate the good qualities of their loved one. We thank you, Lord God, for the impact she had. And we pray, O oh God, that her memory will never fade. So that God like, comfort the family in this hour. Those who are far away and are able to be here today, Lord God. You may join us by online visitors. Those who will watch the service after today, may they be confident. Holy Father, you are the God of all comfort. Comfort us in all our traditions, so that we may have the comfort of others and the comfort we receive from you. May we, Lord God, not be overcome by the pain of death, but be lifted by the hope of resurrection to eternal life, which you have promised through Jesus Christ only. So, Father God, we thank you for Sister Enid, and we commit the family to you now. Bless them. Strengthen them, encourage them, and give them grace for this and every trial. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good friends, we are going to proceed to the graveside for the Mita. We are beset by the conditions, so we have to move with faith. And with caution, so I think I drop it. So um, I'm going to proceed to the screen just across the way from us here.
Sorry, I've heard about that. Yeah,
peace our sister but to carry with us her memory always in our hearts so whereas her body remains here her soul goes back to God her memories remain with us and if we do that she's, she's, she will always be with us we never have to fear we look forward to that day when we will be reunited with her we brought nothing into this world we can take nothing out of the world as in Adam all die, so in Christ all we brought to life. Do not be afraid, Jesus says. I am the first and the last, and I am the living one. I am dead, and now I am alive forevermore. Our oh, sister Enid was buried with Christ in baptism, and in that baptism she will be raised to life with him. If we died with Christ, we shall live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. And when we remain, when we are faithless, he remains faithful. There is nothing in death or in life, in the world as it is, or in the world as it shall be. Nothing in all creation that is ever separate from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have entrusted the soul of our sister Enid into God's merciful keeping. We now commit her body. We now commit her body to the ground. From the earth she came, to the earth she must return. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We do so putting our hope and confidence in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was buried and rose again for us, and is alive and, and reigns forever to the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forevermore. Amen. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us say the 23rd Psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Alright, we're going to sing while the grave diggers do their work. We'll just start with, there's a land that is fairer than day. This one is at the back of the program. And by faith we shall seat afar, for the Father waits over the way. Prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful show. And by faith we can see the fall. For the Father waits over the way. Prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall be on the beautiful shore in the sweet.
Walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in the day. Thank you for being a part of this um, ceremony. Um, sorry you can't be here in person. And thank you for taking time out to actually be here and watch the ceremony and to just offer your sympathy. Thank you and take care. Praise God, I'm free. Praise God, I'm free. Praise God, I'm free. Praise God, I'm free. 